Hey, Plumber Tom here. If you're preparing for a plumbing state test or trying to improve your knowledge of code and understanding of plumbing, don't forget to check in the description below for links to study guides, online courses, and other resources that will help you to learn the code and pass your test. When you click on those links and purchase resources, you're helping me to be able to create more great content. Thanks for watching. Hey, welcome back. This is part two of our discussion of horizontal wet venting. In this video, we're going to look at specific floor plans or fixture layouts. And then we're going to look at how pipes can be run using horizontal wet vent principles to be able to vent the entire bathroom group or even two bathroom groups for the International Plumbing Code using the principles talked about in video one. So let's check it out. Let's examine some examples of this. Once again, you'll be shown a floor plan and the basic layout from above where the pipes will run. Then you'll see an isometric drawing. Hopefully that gives you an idea of how you would use the fittings and the way you would lay that out in order to accomplish wet venting. This is really important for you to understand because you're gonna have to be able to create your own systems depending on where you're at. There may be structure here or there. You have to be able to adjust these and custom fit these horizontal wet vent systems to your installation. This is why understanding all of this is so important in order for you to be the best plumber that you can be. Once we've had a look at some good examples, we will also look at some violations. Pay close attention to those. These are common mistakes that plumbers make because they don't know how to use horizontal wet venting properly. You can avoid making these mistakes. Let's get into some examples of horizontal wet venting. Let's look at a half bathroom first, a simple toilet and a lav. In this case, we have a three-inch line going to the toilet. It branches off, and the drain for the lavatory is being used, both as a drain and a vent, for the toilet. Now, the way that we pipe a horizontal wet vent may vary depending on the approach. So we can come to those fixtures from a different angle. In this case, we come to the toilet from the left side. But similarly, we're going to branch off, and the drain for the lavatory is going to be both a drain and a vent for the toilet. Let's have a look at one more option for this half bathroom. Keep in mind that each of these different approaches may be going in parallel with joists or other structures, or maybe we're going through them, but we're just trying to come to those fixtures from the best approach. Once again, the lavatory drain is being used both as a drain and a vent for the toilet. Now these are all very simple because there are only two fixtures involved. Let's look at some examples of where we have more fixtures involved and how we wet vent those. Here we have a typical bathroom group for our horizontal wet vent example two, a tub, a toilet, and a sink. We're going to use the sink drain as the horizontal wet vent. And we're going to come towards the toilet, branching off with three by two Ys. First we branch off to the tub as we're coming towards the toilet. Then we're gonna branch off for the lavatory, and that's gonna be the vent for all of these fixtures. Now let's follow this downstream from the lavatory to make sure that we're clear on what portions of the drainage are considered a vent. If we start at the sanitary T where the lavatory connects and follow that downstream through the 90, through the 45, and then into that three by two Y, the vent continues down to the last or the farthest downstream fixture, which would be the tub connection. So the three inch pipe from the three by two Y where the lavatory is, to the three by two Y where the tub branches off is all considered horizontal wet vent. This provides air to each of those fixtures involved with this bathroom group. Let's have a look at another option for this same bathroom group. This time we're going to be approaching the bathroom from the right or everything is going to drain away towards the right. As we come towards the toilet, you see there's a branch that comes off and around to the tub. Then there's a branch for the lavatory then we have the toilet. Now you might be looking at this and wondering, well, wouldn't it be easier to branch off for the tub closer? I mean, your toilet extends all the way out there. Why are we coming all the way back before the lavatory? Well, this has everything to do with horizontal wet venting. The wet vent extends downstream from the lavatory. So connecting to the pipe above that, where the toilet is, that's just an arm attaching the toilet. That is not vented. The vent goes downstream. This is all about the way the air flows. So this is why we're going to have to extend downstream and come around and make sure that that tub connection has a direct 
connection or an individual connection to the vent. Here we have horizontal wet vent example three. Let's say we have a master bathroom and we like to have two sinks. So now we're gonna have two lavatories involved and we're going to be wet venting. This is very similar to the last one we looked at. We're gonna have the three inch line going all the way to the toilet with the tub branching off and the lavatory branching off. Notice that the two lavatories are common vented and the vent from those two lavatories is also going to serve as a wet vent for the toilet and the tub as we follow that downstream. Let's have another look at this same bathroom group from a different approach. This time again, the drain is going to be leaving from the toilet and headed towards the right. We're going to have the lavatories branching off and the tub downstream from that. Once again, you see how the tub branches below the lavatory connection so that it has an individual connection to the wet vent, which is downstream from the lavatory. That does mean a little more pipe as it comes and extends around the toilet. And keep in mind there is a distance limitation on a trap arm in order for that to work. Let's pause here and have a look at the trap arm distance as defined in the International Plumbing Code, we have Table 909.1, Maximum Distance of Fixture Trap from Vent. In the first column there is the size of the trap, so this is your pipe size, inch and a quarter, down to four inch. The slope in inches per foot. And then on the third column there is the distance from the trap arm. So an inch and a quarter pipe would have a maximum distance of five feet from the trap arm. Inch and a half pipe would have a maximum distance of six feet. That's your trap arm. The two inch pipe would have a maximum distance of eight feet. All of those at a quarter inch per foot. Then we get to three and four inch and we're at eighth inch per foot slope. A three inch pipe would have a maximum trap arm distance of 12 feet. And a four inch pipe would have a maximum trap arm distance of 16 feet. Now this would be from the vent to where the trap is that's the trap arm, and these are the maximum distances that you can go, according to International Plumbing Code. Uniform Plumbing Code also has limits on trap arm distances, but they are contained on a table in Chapter 10. This is 1002.2, horizontal lengths of trap arms, except for water closets and similar fixtures. Once again, we have three columns. This time we have in the first column the trap arm diameter. This is your pipe size. Then we have the distance to the trap vent minimum. So this is in inches. And the maximum length of the trap arm is in the third column. This time they are all measured in inches. So inch and a quarter is only 30 inches. Inch and a half, 42 inches. Two inch pipe is 60 inches maximum. Three inch pipe, 72 inches maximum and four inch pipe, 120 inch maximum. You'll find on all of these that uniform plumbing code is more restrictive on the distance of the trap arm. So be sure that you are conforming to whichever code is within your local jurisdiction. Let's return to our horizontal wet vent examples. We have here example four, and in this floor plan we have two half bathrooms back to back. So two toilets, two lavatories. We're going to horizontal wet vent these from several perspectives. The pipe will be coming up through the middle of the fixtures or in between them. First it will branch off to the toilet and then we'll branch off for the lavatories. These will be common vented and then it will catch the last toilet. You can see the wet vent would include the drain pipe from the common vented lavatories and down through the three inch pipe to the last toilet fixture. Let's have another look at a horizontal wet vent option for these half bathrooms back to back. If the pipe were to come through from the right side heading towards the fixtures and this time we're going to branch off from the top of the pipe for the vent and for the lavatory drains. You can see they're stacked on top of each other. They're going to catch the drains. Follow this through. Notice that the wet vent goes from those lavatory drains down that stack and it continues to the last fixture connected. So it goes downstream through the three inch pipe. Let's take the horizontal wet vent to the maximum according to International Plumbing Code. We're gonna catch two full bathroom groups here, two lavatories, two toilets, and two tubs. You can see here we're going straight towards the lavatory with the drain and branching off for all of those. 
The wet vent would extend from the common vented lavatories down through all of that three inch drainage pipe past each of those connections. And all of that serves both as a drain and a vent. Now, if you look at this, this probably isn't the most ideal for you know fitting layout, for the conservation of pipe, not the most effective layout, but this works according to horizontal wet vent principles because each is attached individually to the wet vent as each fixture branches off. Let's look at a different option for this. We have the same bathroom groups back to back. This time let's try to employ some double fittings to be able to save on fittings and save on pipe. The drain is headed to the right. You can see with the use of these double Ys, we are able to branch off along the way for each of the tubs, toilets, and if we follow the wet vent through, once again, we've got our common wet vented lavatories. That drain is going to serve as a vent all the way down to the double Ys connecting the tubs. This is as much as you can do with the horizontal wet vent according to the International Plumbing Code. As you can see, there are a variety of ways that you can install horizontal wet venting, even for the same fixture layout, depending on where your pipe is coming from, the approach through structure like joists, and how the fixtures lay out in relation to each other. This is where it really comes down to your own creativity and figuring out a layout that meets the code principles for horizontal wet venting, but also meets your objectives in connecting all the fixtures and venting them properly. Hopefully these examples help you to see some possibilities for the ways that you may lay it out. But in the next video, we're going to go specifically over violations. These are common mistakes that people make as they are installing or attempting to install horizontal wet vents. So stay tuned for that one. In this video, we've looked at how to do things correctly according to the International Plumbing Code. Keep in mind the Uniform Plumbing Code is a little more restrictive and some of the illustrations here may not work for the Uniform Plumbing Code, particularly the principle where the toilet cannot be the last fixture in the line. But hopefully this is helpful to you as you go out and use these principles creating your own systems. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.